gonna start it? I'll start it. Wait, let me flip it. All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thursday. Friday Eve. Uh, welcome to the Forever in a Day Friday show. Eve. We yes. are Sean and Antoinette McDonald of Forever in a Day Publishing LLC, where we focus on God, God family, family, career, career and, and finances. finances. Please, please, please let us know how you are doing on this wonderful Thanksgiving. Because tonight is episode three of season two, yes. Thanksgiving. Be sure to catch our previous episodes at FAAD LLC on our Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube page. Yes. It is customary that we begin every show with prayer. So please join us. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to come, one, and say thank you for every day, but especially on today, Thanksgiving, Father God, with all the families and friends who have had an opportunity to reach out to each other, even just through Facebook. Father God, we let them know again that they are among the land of the living, Father God, and that they are better to be seen than to be viewed, Father God. So as we go forward in this holiday season, Father God, we just want to make sure that we give you all the honor and the glory and be thankful for every day and everything that you provide us. So allow this episode, Father God, Thanksgiving, to be a blessing to all the viewers and the hearers. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray, amen. 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 And we do not, <laughs> Sean was over here <laughs> crunching on the celery sticks. It's Thanksgiving, um, eating must happen. I just want to just say we do not own the rights to the music that's playing, but I'm over here jamming in my seat, Benny Single. So, okay, all right, all right. So please make sure you watch last week's episode, Why Not Me? And it's on our uh, pages as well. And if you check it out, leave a message. Absolutely. Okay. Definitely. So the focus for this episode, we're going to start with the Bible verse, First Thessalonians. Go ahead, say it with me. Thessalonians 5.18 states that we are to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Again, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what your situation, no matter where you find yourself today or any day, find Jesus in the reason for the circumstance. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. you know, we think about how much Antoinette turned me on to our heart radio's Elevation Music. So, in this piece, why don't you share with the people? So, there's a song called Jaira. So, Jaira, you know, Jehovah Jaira, you're my provider. Mm -hmm. But there's a song, and I, I'm not a, a singer, but there is a song. Um, and we definitely hope that you check it out. But Break the words down. are, you, you are Jaira. You are enough. Yes. Jaira, you are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. Right. Jaira, you are enough. And then there's a part that says, uh, forever enough. No, not that, not that Jaira. Uh, <laughs> forever enough, always enough, more than enough. And the song itself will take you into a whole nother level of worship, but it's about thanksgiving right. no matter the circumstance and all circumstances yep. i will continue to give you the praise amen so um we got a couple of bible verses here that i am going to start off with the first one is deuteronomy 8 11 through 14 and deuteronomy 8 11 through 14 right isn't that what mm -hmm. i said okay um, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build your houses, your fine houses, and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget that the Lord God... Right who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. So what that is saying is that no matter what happens in your life, like when you get when you get your first job mm -hmm. and you start, you know, you get your first house or you buy, uh, buy your first car, all of these things that that happen, you get your first job and you and you're making, you know, you making four figures, five right. figures, six figures that you do not become so boastful mm -hmm. and proud that you forget that God was the one who gave it to you. Yes. So there's this season of Thanksgiving that has to take place in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, the 17th scripture of the same uh, chapter. Uh, Sean's going to read that. Can you see it? Absolutely. Yes. I got you. I had you. Right here. Yep, you All can right. say to yourself. So again, Deuteronomy 
8817. Hi, Dana. And what's up, cousin Dana? <laughs> <laughs> she right in the next room. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. It sure did. Not, all right, so mm -hmm. as Antoinette said, every increase that you get, make sure that you turn your eyes to the heavens and make sure that you thank God for everything because it's not your hands, it sure not isn't. your power, it sure not isn't. my power, not my hands, but by the grace and mercy of God. Amen. Amen. The next one is Ephesians 2. Sean, can you stop so it doesn't shake the table, baby? Um, 8 and 9. It says, For it was by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, right. not by works, so that no one can boast. Nope. So that's the truth. Like, I don't care what you do. I don't care who you do it for. But you always have to give God praise because the blessing is going to continue to mm -hmm. come if you are thankful for the things that you have, small and big. Right. And the last one is about King Jehoshaphat. Yes, Psalm 107 and 8. So G King Jehoshaphat sent a choir and musicians to fight a battle against those armed with weapons. So he sent a choir and he musicians. Sent, he sent a whole choir. To fight against an army. A whole war. Who were armed with weapons. Mm -hmm. Real weapons. Like. Not trumpets and flutes. No, no. All right. Mm -mm. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> How uncommon. But they sung to the Lord and praised his holiness. God sent an ambush against the enemy and they were destroyed. We give thanks and praise ahead of the blessing. So give thanks before, during, and after. And I think that's so applicable because sometimes when we're actually in the midst of trials, circumstances, again on the job, with family, etc., we have to either turn inwardly or outwardly and give a holy word. So even when we think about worship, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, Father God. You know what I mean? So you sing to your enemies and you will make a footstool out of them. Mm -hmm. So literally, they're coming at you with all of this angst, all of this energy. And if you just smile, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Bless you. Right. God bless you. I don't hold it against you. Access the Father night. God, they know not what they do. Yeah. Come on, access the night. Yeah, and just praise them. And I, and I shared that before, that whenever, even at work, you know, you have these very irate parents. You might have, you know, a supervisor that may not understand uh, where you're coming from. Don't even think and, and try to consider the fact that you're coming as stressed as they are. Right. Right? But they try to dump it all on you. They try to, you know, pretty much vomit all over you. With their nastiness, yes. right? But when you, I mean, literally, when I'm in somebody's face, there is a joy that I have within myself because mm -hmm. I know if I if I meet and match their intensity, then it's gonna, it's we just might as well just hang it up because right. I'm gonna be behind bars, yep. right? So you gotta you gotta calm your spirit down. I give a spirit of thanksgiving, like thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be in this situation. Allow me to minister yes. to the person that I'm interacting with. That's it. You know, I don't like drama, but if it comes to my door, best believe I'm going to open it. Right. But am I going to open it with a, a heart of, of malice or am I going to open it with a, a, a feeling of thanksgiving and understanding that I'm going to have God lead and I'll follow. Exactly. So <laughs> even for me, every time that, you know, even I'm, when I'm up against the kids or whomever, you know, it might look strange for me not to just come back and come back what they're saying or what's going on. But I really do have to go to that quiet, quiet, still space in my heart where God is resonating and saying, you know what? These are the words I want you to speak. So this true. is how I want you to respond. And I have to give myself, my heart, my mind an opportunity to again process, you know, look to the hills from where cometh my strength. And say, God, what should, what should I say? You know what I mean, how should I respond? What should I, say? What should I do? You Where know? should my hands exactly. be? Exactly. And that is actually what gives me the grace. And again, your enemies are looking at you bewildered, like, what? Mm -hmm. You didn't come back with the same energy. That's when we give God the honor. Because you're like, oh, something must be in him. Oh, he's different. Oh, something must be in her. She's different. Yeah. So that's what you want to do. That's evangelizing without asking person to look up the first verse in the Bible. Because your yeah. energy, your spirit is demonstrating God's will in your life. Amen. Give them thanks. So thinking about the thing, thank you, Siani. Um, thinking about the book of Luke, right? So we all know that Jesus went around, he healed the sick, right? People with leprosy, um, the woman with the issue of blood, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the blind, right? So he he was in the healing business in your heart and also in the physical attributes, right? Um, the word talks about Jesus healing um, ten men. There were ten men that he had healed. Um, who had a whole lot to be thankful for. You know, if you have leprosy, if you can't see, all of that, right? You have a lot of things to be thankful for once Jesus has healed you. 
But these men never, ever said thank you, but right. one, but one. So you think Jesus was a Jew, um, you know, he, he walked amongst his people, right? Mm -hmm. They did not thank him, even though they were outcasts and they had all these diseases, etc. They didn't thank him. They just walked away like we received the goodness thank and then you. we just walked away. There was no thank you. No, it was just like, oh, I'm, I'm healed. Yeah. And then I'm going about my business. But the only one who thanked him was a Samaritan. And mm -hmm. if you know the word, Jews and Samaritans never really, you know, there wasn't a cross in between. Right. There was no interactions. Because everyone um, outside of Jewish faith were called Gentiles. Was, were Gentiles. So they were separated. Yep. So, but we all come together because of the blood. Jesus. Because Amen. of the blood of Jesus. But the verse that I was, um, it's, it's Luke 17. Uh, verses 15 through 16 so definitely go ahead and check um, check that out but it does just talk about one of them when he saw that he was healed came back praising God in a loud voice he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him and he was a Samaritan so that to say is no matter what you're going through if you are healed of it it might not be physical it might be emotional we have a lot of folks that are emotionally broken mm -hmm. me I was you know included in Amen. that as well and as soon as you are healed, there has to be a thanksgiving. And, and like Sean said, before, during, and after, we should be giving thanks. Absolutely. Because he's always right on time. So we make sure that we thank him for it. Mm -hmm. We have a couple questions that we want all of you, all of us, to reflect on in thinking about thanksgiving. The first question is, have you recently come to God for help? I know the answer for me. And he came through for you? I know the answer for me. <laughs> Second question. Did you come back to say thank you? Amen. Yes. So let that resonate, you know, in terms of one, have you recently come to God, gone to God for help? God, I need you. God, please. And he came through for you on that thing, that petition of prayer that you actually set forth before him. Mm -hmm. And he I'm came through for you. And did you ever say thank you to him? I was just going to say, um, you know, as far as the reflection, I heard Siani say yes. Um, for me, I've come to Jesus uh, for help, I've come to God to help me understand how great I am. Mm. You know, so many people tell me that there's different callings on my life, but when you don't believe it yourself, it's all for naught. So I asked God to reveal to me what it is my what what is my purpose? Why not me? Right from last week. Right. And the fact that He laid on me like, do you know how many people you help get jobs? How many people you've helped get promoted? Mm -hmm. How many people you talk life into? Yes. That's your passion, yes. and that is your purpose. And Absolutely. I'm like, what? You know. Um, yeah. And he has come to come through for me mightily. Mm -hmm. And even when I was shaking in my boots about, do you, would somebody really pay for my service? Right. Would somebody really pay to to be mentored by me and to have the very first invoice be paid? I was like, what? Right. Thank you, Lord. Exactly. You know, thank you for the revel like, the revelation, yes. of course, revealing who I am. And there's still so much more. Yes. But yes, while he while he revealed it to me as I prayed for it, mm -hmm. um, and he showed it to me and came through in a mighty way, I definitely continue to give him praise. Absolutely. Not you know, in the past tense, like I continue to give him praise right, for what he's right, going right. to do. I see Leon. Hey, good to see you, Leon. Hi, babe. As, as you stated, you know, you thanked him, but after he granted your ask, you had to go back after reflection and then say thank you. Yeah. And that's good. You know what I mean? Because, again, it's, it's never too late. But making sure that you gave God his honor, his due, and saying thank you, I'm sure he was pleased. Amen? Definitely. One of the things that I think a lot of families go through, even now, as we think about Thanksgiving, you know, we come together maybe after years of separation, be it the pandemic or whatever reason. Thank you. But when we come together, you know what I mean? You might be reflected and then some of the stories and that times you're catching up on, it might be some heavy things that the families or your own household have gone through and now you're kind of just adding up the pieces. But one of the things that God revealed to me in this season is that as long as my testimony continues to be his testimony, what he gives me to share out, mm -hmm. then I'm not absorbing some of the hurt, some of the pain, you know what I mean? So I'm not necessarily bearing my brothers or sisters' crosses, but he's given me a word to give to them in ministry. That's true. And what he revealed to me most recently is the fact that the consistent message of reconciliation is upon wow. all of us. With me, 
because I have to own my reconciliation for whatever reason, my separation, my distance, my not picking up the phone, making calls, you know, responding to email, Facebook text messages or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have a responsibility in those relationships. So through that, again, I was able to give God thanks and say, thank you, God. Because I don't have to be like, what am I going to say to them? Yeah. Um, you know, am I going to make up something? Right. Am I going to avoid them? Right. Yeah. Why, why are they coming to me with it? It just mm -hmm. gives me further revelation that God is saying, yeah, take this. Put it in your back pocket when you need it. When you need it. And sure enough, you know, his words were on my lips. So when I was able to speak to multiple people, same situation, I was able to say the same exact thing. Yeah, message is consistent. The message is consistent. So I think that was one of the things that, again, I'm thankful for with God, that he gave me a consistent message through prayer and meditation. And I believe that, again, I help restore some of the relationships that I have been distant from and hopefully help other folks in my family, you know what I mean, know how to speak to their siblings, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles. Amen. That's good. Amen. You know, I think about like uh, Monopoly, the get out of jail free card. It's mm -hmm. like get out of hurt card. And, and there's a picture of, of God just there. Like, wow, get out of hurt card. Get, get out of hurt card. You know, like and just we gonna I'm gonna give this to you in your back pocket, mm -hmm. and when you interact with someone who is hurt, just hand it over. Yes. Get get out of hurt. God. You know, like we got we got the ultimate healer. Yep. Right of relationships, and sometimes the healing of relationships are is just that mm -hmm. healed from that relationship, yes. and you let it go. Yes. Like it is a okay. You don't have to reconcile and become the mm -hmm. best of friends, mm -hmm. best of family, all of that. No. I forgive you. I thank God for the experience, right. good, bad, or indifferent, because it's definitely going to help me in my future. Yes. But the relationship, is, it's okay if the relationship is null and void. Amen. It is a okay because now you have a card to get out of hurt. I like it. Yeah. We can praise the Lord in good times, but we can also praise him in those bad times. And are you giving him the praise that he deserves, even Go in ahead. the bad times? Even in the bad times, you know, a bad time for me and, and, you know, I thank God for not having a lot of bad times in my adult mm -hmm. life, right? There's a, it could be a lot worse, right? But it's not. So I thank God for that. Um, but my multiple sclerosis, there are times where I just really be like, Lord, you go ahead and take this yoke from me. Right. Like that, I'm good. Like I, I think I did a good job on this earth because mm -hmm. there are times when it, it is that bad. But even when I am in pain. I give thanks right. because I can still feel it. Mm -hmm. If I didn't feel it, that means I'm gone from this place and I'm up with him, right? Amen. But the fact that I am still awake and I can feel it, I can still taste, I can still hear, I can still smell, I can still touch, I give God thanks. Yes. I'll cry through some right. things. And I will continue to give him thanks. So I ask or encourage you that to continue to praise him even in the bad times because he it may seem like he has forgotten you or forsaken you. I guarantee you if his own son That's right. If his own son had to endure, endure. in order to for us to be free, All it's okay us. if we have our, our bad days because he will remove those from us as well. That's right. That's the testimony. I mean, I don't even necessarily have to co-sign that, but I don't care if you're dealing with drug addiction, alcoholism, your, your bills got more month than you got money, yeah. poverty, you know, finances. Again, God is taking you through that situation so that you can give him praise. Yeah. Through the situation, knowing that he's not going to forsake you, you are going to make it to the other side where you have more money than a little bit. You know what I mean? Where no longer you have that taste in your mouth for that drink or that drug. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I mean, if you're faced with incarceration, you know what I mean, or you have family members who are incarcerated, the same thing. Stay in touch with them as best you can, but know they're going through. Mm -hmm. And when they come through, you know, hopefully their hands are raised in a spirit and posture of praise. So, again, thanking them for it in their testimonies to help the nations. Amen? Yeah. So sometimes it may feel like a sacrifice to give thanks and praise to God because we don't want to. Flat out. That's Stubbornness. True. My pride. You know what I mean? God's not real. He wasn't there when I really needed him, etc. Or even, even because that point, yes, like I don't need him. I did right. this myself. But even also on the other side, like I did this, mm -hmm. right? That or pride. I have, I have all of this just because I did it. Right. Why in the world? I mean, how, how am I going to give him a sacrificial praise? Mm. And I did this myself <laughs> because we don't want to. Right been there come on that's why i'm like uh, for me it's there's no judgment because i've been there the whole time like 
I, I did this. And yep. he sure as heck knocked me on my behind, took my baby girl and all. Think like, about it. You got, yeah. Well, yeah. mind you, just mm -hmm. a reminder, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't want to place Never. or trade places Never. with Jesus, Never. Job, Never. Moses, Never. Abraham. Never. But the fact that we have those examples in the Bible through the Spirit, and again, we are in the Bible, you are in the Bible, we know that your testimony is as real as theirs, so you have to go through it making sure that you give God all the praise. Mm -hmm. So we could really be going through some struggles. You know, again, as we mentioned, depression, etc. And we don't feel like praising God. But the word doesn't say give thanks to the Lord because you feel good. <laughs> Only in times of great posterity and, you know, prosperity. Yeah. No, through all things. So again, give thanks to the Lord because he deserves it. He is good and he deserves yes. it. Yeah. The Bible says give thanks to the Lord. Yes, for he is good. For he, he is, is good. good. Not you. <laughs> Not because you feel good. Right. You're you're a vessel. You know what I mean? Because he is good. Let's put it in proper perspective. Amen. Leon says sometimes you're just so focused on your own problems and don't think of anything else. And that's okay. Like, that's so true. Right. Like, please do not get us twisted. We are not here, like, judging you. You mm -mm. need to do this because wow. we've been there. Yeah. We've been we there. We go through it daily. And Lord knows that I am in my bag half of the time about certain things. What does that mean? That means just being in my feelings, just okay. being in, you know, the state of, of self, being in the state of self and not really realizing that it could really be worse and what is the first thing god does he reveals somebody or something that is worse off than i was mm -hmm. he does it to me all the time like Antoinette, calm it down right. humble yourself you are not the only one going through let me show you something let me show you this family let me show this community let me show you what on this documentary let me show, like life can True. always be worse mm -hmm. once again with my ms you know, I have relapse and remitting MS. But there are people that are in wheelchairs, and he reveals that through, through social media right. connections that I have with other people that have MS. And it's like, it could be worse. I'm sitting here frowning and sad because I, you know, I'm, I'm going through this flare up. Mm -hmm. And there's people who, you know, haven't, haven't been able to walk. Right, right. But I have a flare up that's going to be temporary. But they can't walk, and they still got a joyful, a joyful mm -hmm. message to mm -hmm. give me. He reveals that to me every time I want to be in this walk, this, this low level of of pity, mm -hmm. self shame, and pity. He reveals yes. himself to me, yep. and I have to then again. Even though I don't want to because I'm being stubborn, I, I have to giggle and be like, thank you, Lord. Yes. You know, thank you for revealing that yes. to me. It makes me think about our episode last week where it was titled, you know, Why Not Me? So as we think about why not me, again, God needs you. He needs you to be that, that armor bearer. He needs you to go through the experience. You know what I mean? Because people look at you. They're like, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to him. I can relate to her. I understand what they're doing. Oh, well, they're going through some health issues. Yes, you are going through the health issue. But all the while, we're asking you and to think about how much you can praise God through it. Because you have medical insurance, praise God. Because you can go to the doctor at the sign a sign in or on an app or a phone call you can get that appointment you know because you can wake up in the morning and go to work praise god because you can go to the bank account and see that there's a few dollars in there yeah those are the things that you want to be able to say you know what i'm broke yeah i can't wait until next payday but i got enough bills i got enough money to pay my bills my lights are still on you know i mean i got a key to turn into a lock and have a place to stay at night so again, through all circumstances, please give God the thanks. So why not you? Because God needs you. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Think back to the many, many of prayers that we have offered to God and have been answered and how seldom we come back to God thanking him. All right. So it just the amazes us. Just said. Yep. It's the same thing we just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yes. We should be deliberate in our yes. thanks. Truly yes. be deliberate. There's some things that I prayed for a long time ago, um, and in all in all honesty, I prayed for my you know prayed for my marriage often. But there's certain things that I prayed for um, specifically in our for our marriage, right? And years later, they are now coming to pass, right? Right? And so because of that, I have to remember my prayers too. You can't just be throwing things out. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then be like, well, it, it might, it might land on God's ears. No, you have to pray those things and expect them. I, yes. I told you guys before, like I expect God. Like I, I let them know. Mm -hmm. Like I declare and decree. And I, and you said, if I give you the desire of my heart, like you already know those. Yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust that he's going to give them to me once I'm on solid food to be able to digest Amen. what he's going to give me. Amen. And so now, some 21 years later, even in our marriage, things that I prayed for in our turmoil mm -hmm. of our first three, five years, those things are now coming into fruition. And I have to thank God and all of the... The, the the growth that we've been able mm -hmm. to experience over the years. Yeah. So I'm so very happy. Yes. Yeah. Oftentimes, you know what I mean, again, if you look back on your life, you know, again, of course you have a lot to be thankful for. But just think of how many people have said, you know, what you said to me was powerful mm. or impactful, but it was years later. You know, that's the sort of thing where you, it's never too late. I don't believe it's ever too late to reach back into the books of your life and say, thank you, God, for this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, for that. Because now, even in our maturity, we're able to see how far God has brought us. So in that, God might be like, yeah, it was 20 years ago, but thank you for thanking me. I think that's I think that's a really good point. Like you told me how you or God pulled you from getting into that car. Yes. Real life. Some you know, years later. Yes. And, and very quickly, the story was that I had a choice to make whether or not I was going to get into the stolen car. And I was about 13 or 14 years old. So all of my friends, same age, but they had started selling cars. Um, and literally, I just saw, you know, I mean, that it wasn't a good choice, even though it was a popular thing to do. You know, people got in and not 30 seconds later, the red and blues police were chasing this car after the left. And I just looked back like, wow, that could have been me. You know what I mean? I would have got sucked up as we used to call it. So in that, I had to thank God. Again, later, many years later, like that would have changed the whole trajectory of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, giving God his due praise for recognizing the Holy Spirit, even as a young teenager, and that discernment, the choice, the opportunities that God has prov provided me throughout my life, I oftentimes give God overdue, past due, repetitive thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because we know we know that we're special. So again, look for those opportunities. Again, that's a challenge. Look at opportunities to give God thanks for at least three or four things over your whole life. Go back into the books, the annuals of your life and give thanks to God for those things that he's brought you through. Amen. I, hey, I was talking to, um, uh, who was it on Facebook? A messenger. And they were like, look, I'm so glad that I wasn't pregnant when I was in high school with mm. so-and-so's baby. Like, because they thought that they weren't pregnant. Real and life. then they got their cycle. Right. Real life. And so it's like, yo, because you look back and you look at that person and you're like, there's no way in the world that I would have been able to right. make a life with that person. Right. right? <laughs> I mean, even, even me, like, I'm so glad that, that, that Sean was placed in my life, that I was placed in his mm -hmm. life. Because Lord knows where I would be right now. Amen. Lord knows, right? So I think it's absolutely right, Edith. Yes. Right. So it's it's absolutely um ordained, absolutely. right? So you gotta go back, you gotta go all the way back for the Thanksgiving. And Edith, I'm gonna call you out right now since you're on. You know what I mean? I definitely enjoy our friendship, even though we don't, you know, stay in touch as often as we did, but we went to middle school together. So thinking about those middle school days at Gladstone, you know what I mean? Again, I don't even know how you saw me and perceived me, but the fact that we're in communication today, the fact that you're, know I mean, first lady, that you're living a life of God, you know what I mean? Think about one thing or two things that you can really just give God thanks for and share out, please, because I definitely hold you in high esteem. You know what I mean? I praise God for you, Edith. For sure. And I know um, Yaisa's on here and uh, yes. Leon's on here. I know you guys all have something to share. Please don't let us be having a testimony by ourselves, <laughs> Absolutely. right? Because we all been through, you know, you, you're you over 30 years old. Yes, I didn't so even see you guys was on it's time, I think it's, yeah, it's, 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 yes. it's Zoma. Zoma. I'm sorry, Zoma. Zoma, share, hun. Yes. Um, and then those of you who come on after the recording as well, share. So we can get, we can be the living epistles for those to, to view, right? Yes. So when you're on here and you share down those those times that you pray for something and then it came came to fruition, we need to know that this word is living, right. it is activated within our everyday lives. And even even though um, there may be some that don't believe um, in, in in 
God per se or a deity. They, it, it, it's the universe. We're, we respect that mm -hmm. as well, right? And so if you feel that there has been something that has happened within your life that you've placed out into the atmosphere and it has come back to you 10 times, 100 times. Fold, you mean like karma? Like yeah. And use it as an example, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Definitely, yeah. Definitely share that as well. You know, um, like Sean and I said uh, earlier on in our first season, like it's not about just Christianity, boom, boom, boom. We're not beating anybody in the head. We're sharing mm -hmm. our personal testimony. Yes. And we, we have uh, many people of influence that um, have different beliefs than mm -hmm. we do. And we respect those mm -hmm. no matter what because it doesn't change who I am and who I praise. But it, it gives need the love to be able to help someone else absolutely mm -hmm. so go ahead can we... oh well let me read um <laughs> So Leon said, you know, he definitely thanked God uh, for moving him from Pittsburgh. Um, even though he was scared, he was broke and unprepared. Um, amen, Leon. I'm thankful that he moved you uh, to D.C. as well. Um, God has, has done some mighty things in your life and have kept you from things unseen. Amen. And um, I'm ever so thankful for him for that. And either said, I thank God for keeping me. Um, whole and walking with me when I thought I was alone. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Like, uh, there's so many times. You, you know, you can feel alone in a room full of people, right? You can feel so Facts. lonely. You can feel so, so lonely. But when you have that relationship with God, He is always there. Yep. That's a beautiful thing. It is an absolutely beautiful thing. Yes. I'm glad I'm his daughter. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. If, if God can use David, you know what I mean? A 12-year-old boy with a slingshot. You know what I mean? A few stones in his pocket yeah. to bring down a whole giant. Oh, I was about to say pocket full of stones. That's a different pocket full I'm of stones. Sorry. You know what I mean? Damn Thank God same. for your testimony. Thank you for Thank God for your testimony. He working on me. <laughs> Won't he do it? He'll even use hip hop. Remix. That might have been what it was about, honestly. Right? When you start to read the message, break it down. He just decided to take the message a whole other that's way. It. But that's it. But we're going to praise I'm God sorry. for the hip hop in I'm you. Sorry. Um, but that's it. You know what I mean? So why not you? Yeah. Why not through your testimony? Why not when, you know. How <laughs> Leon say, girl? Uh... <laughs> reach it. Reach it. But I'm sorry. Your testimony as. So is work. as important. I'm still aware. All right. So just make sure that you don't minimize your own light. Allow God's light to shine through you. All right. <laughs> His light is so much greater. So everything that you've gone through, everything that you might go through, everything that you will go through, give God thanks. Yeah. So uh, you, you guys, if you follow me on my personal page, you know that on Sundays in the story, I'll be putting what our bishop says during the message. So this is something that I, I want you guys to put, post it on social media. Remember to thank God for all his blessings. Yes. Exclamation mark. Like, make sure you remember to thank God for all his blessings. Facts. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know we share because it's not ours to keep. Nope. Thank you, Father God. You know what I mean? We actually definitely thank you for joining us in all things. Let's see, we got a couple more uh, comments. So, thank you, Edith. Oh, you know. Edith, thank you, yes. honey. Thank you. Yes. Aww. She says, praise God. You know, love You've you guys. Marriage. A, You've always been a good person. That's so true. Amen. That's so true. I Even see, when I didn't know why, Edith. Even then, you know what I'm saying, wasn't like, all right, cool. Wasn't necessarily trying to be popular or with the in crowd. Chosen generation. That's it. I was just trying to walk in God's path, man. Like, all right, if it's not for me, it's not for me. If you want me to go left, I'll go left. So, you know, it is what it is. And again, now that we have a little bit to share, it's not ours to keep. Thank you, baby. Our 21-year-old. That's a whole nother episode. We thank God for our yeah, daughter and our children. son. Oh my gosh. <laughs> as she is in our studio audience in the dining room. Um, it's not ours to keep. So we thank you for watching the Forever in a Day show with Sean and Antoinette McDonald of Forever in a Day Publishing LLC, where we focus on God, family, career, and finances. Please connect with us at F-A-A-D-L-L-C on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And again, we're building out our YouTube channel, so all of our episodes will be 
you know, stored there. They're being converted. So if you need any information, please send us an email at faadpublishing at gmail.com. Join us again next Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. As you see, not even a holiday will keep us from it. All right? So join us next Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. for a live episode on our FAADLLC Facebook page. And before we, we leave out, we are here in Pittsburgh at uh, our Uncle Dougie and Ann Gwen's house. Amen. And we definitely thank them for, for opening up their home yes. um, to us. We, we are so happy to be in Pittsburgh and see our family. So we have Dana and Al and Uncle Dougie and Ann Gwen and Danielle and Desiree and Jaden and, and Dante and yes. Siani and Sean, like every. Yes, here, so. we miss you too, David and Erica. We definitely hope Florida is treating you right. <laughs> um, you know, thank you for we just visited. You know, Mommy Inez's house, Brother Norman. Yeah. You know, Mateek, sister. Yes, Alexis. sister Lexus, Brother Matik. Um, yes, Del Rey, yeah. uh, our our great, great niece. niece. Or no, niece. our niece. <laughs> our niece, Kaylin. Precious we're seven trying, months old. Add years on it. I know, right? Going through the generations. Um, and again, but a beautiful blessing has been a beautiful Thanksgiving all the way around. Yeah. So go ahead, get back to your turkey or your after dinner festivities. Make sure that y'all handle your business. Stay safe out there. Stay, you know, warm. Don't make any bad choices or decisions. And we'll be be sure to uh, see you next Thursday. Take care. Bye.